everybody, Mike here with another Transformers 5 discussion as we are getting closer and closer to the release of Transformers The Last Night. It is only a little bit over a week away. So crazy that it's coming so soon. And we're gonna, in this episode, we're going to be talking about the Decepticons and the Decepticon threat that the Autobots will be facing in Transformers The Last Night. So, a little bit, a little while ago, there were some profiles that were released over across different Transformers fan sites around the web, and each website got their own profile of, an own, of their own Decepticon, and so we're going to be going over what those Decepticons are like and what their personalities are like in Transformers Last Night, so hopefully those personalities will translate from the profiles to the movie itself and not just kind of be like, oh yeah, he is like this, doesn't show it in the movie, but but you take our word for it. So hopefully it's not like that. So let's go ahead and go one by one over these Decepticon characters. The first one is Dreadbot. Now Dreadbot is the uh, Volkswagen bus that we saw filming a while back. So originally Dreadbot was not his rumor name. His rumor name was Hooligan at the time. However, it seems like that has changed. I don't know if it was due to some licensing or if that's, you know, it seems like a very Michael Bay name, Dreadbot. Um, <laughs> keeping the old style. So Dreadbot is that bus and he robs a bank. He's a bank robber. Um, that's according to his profile there. So now if you remember the very first footage that we ever saw from Transformers The Last Night was a little bit of an IMAX video before the first trailer came out in December. Now, in this little IMAX preview video, kind of going over you know, uh, how they were filming and the cameras that they were using, they showed a couple of short clips from the movie without any CGI or anything. One of those short clips was in a bank and there was an explosion of money. Money was flying up in the air. So I'm getting the feeling that we are definitely seeing this bank robbery in the movie, and that's pretty darn awesome. Now, what would a Decepticon want to do with some money? I don't know. I guess just blow it up <laughs> just to be an idiot. But uh, that's pretty cool that we're going to be getting to see that in the movie. That's super awesome scene. Uh, can't wait for that. Our next Decepticon is Nitro Zeus. So originally we thought this guy was just going to be named Nitro, but I guess he's going to have a last name. Nitro Zeus is his full name, and ironically ended up turning into the name of Michael Bay's dog. So uh, pretty cool there. Um, so Nitro Zeus is a jet. He looks like Shockwave, and that's maybe because he's related to Shockwave in some way, because according to his profile, he has been angered by the death of of Shockwave. So pretty interesting stuff there. And as you'll notice with all of these Decepticons that I'm showing here, all of them have some kind of uh, spray paint on their bodies. So that's 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 very interesting. They're kind of like a like a tag team type <laughs> tag team. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but that's funny. Um so they're kind of just like this team of Decepticons that have maybe been together in the past. I don't know, maybe they're kind of like suicide squadish. So our next Decepticon is Megatron, of course, and he is a Cybertronian jet, which we have known in the past, and he is under surveillance by the Transformers Reaction Force, or TRF. So there is Megatron right there. Our next Decepticon is Mohawk, and Mohawk is the motorcycle that we saw back in filming. Really awesome looking motorcycle. He does seem to have a hollow driver uh, seen from onset photos, so that's pretty cool. And Mohawk has a very unique look. He kind of looks like a, like a fish or a chameleon or something like that. He looks kind of like he was inspired by one of the characters from Transformers Robots in Disguise who appeared like a frog, kind of has that same kind of vibe going on. Um, now, he is a knife-wielding Decepticon, and he's the one that's carrying the spray paint cans. So I don't know if uh, Mohawk is a bit of an artist, maybe, and he's like, hey, guys, let's, let's, uh, let, me, let, me, let me, you know, spray paint you <laughs> or something like that. But I, I really like that whole spray paint thing. It's kind of, like, unique. Like, hey, they all have this spray paint, and, and Mohawk has the spray paint, spray paint cans, and oh, maybe we'll get a scene of him, of him like tagging the other Decepticons or something. That'd be pretty cool. 
Our next Decepticon is Onslaught, and we've known about this name for quite some time. And Onslaught has been working on a weapon called the Decapitator. So remember, his vehicle form has the little markings on it of uh, Autobots killed as well as humans that he's killed. So that's a really unique character trait that he has there. So there we have Onslaught. Now our next Decepticon is Berserker and Berserker is an SUV um, and we saw this once during filming before and of course he is in the wave one of the Transformers The Last Night toy line. I'm sure many of you have picked him up and now in the toy line he has the giant X spray painted on his chest. Um, kind of hard to tell if he is like that in the film or not. Um, I've been kind of keeping away from some TV spots so maybe they've revealed something um, that I have not seen yet. If it has been revealed, don't bother telling me because I don't even want to know. I'm kind of, I think I'm going to do like one more TV spot reaction and then that's going to be it. So just to kind of do like that one last one, but uh, maybe um, that's been revealed, but I don't know. And so Berserker is extremely unique because he's practically like a vampire or a zombie or something like that. He, uh, he leaves bodies with their flesh sucked dry. Very interesting. And as you see on his image here, he has kind of like a muzzle that he's been broken out of. So pretty cool there. Um, kind of confirms the whole Decepticon prison type thing. He's kind of locked up. He's got the muzzle on. And then our next and our final Decepticon is Barricade. Of course, the police car. This one, unfortunately, didn't have Barricade in his robot form, but it had him in his cop car form. And Barricade is known as an assassin. An assassin who is very good at escaping death, I tell you what. So that is our Decepticon lineup right there. Also, some interesting notes is that when the TRF kind of like took over the social media for Transformers, they left some like interesting tidbits of information. And a couple of them are that uh, Chicago, the whole cleanup has been abandoned and is a huge hotspot for Transformers activity. So that's pretty interesting there. And there's also a, a big hot spot of Transformers that end up land that, that end up landing in Shanghai. So uh, Shanghai, of course, was uh, a part of the opening of Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen, if you remember that. So the Transformers, I don't know why they're hanging out in Shanghai, why they're deciding to land there. Who knows? Um, but they're definitely. Uh, a lot of them in Chicago as well, so that's kind of probably why they decided to abandon the cleanup. Um, now, I don't know about how the whole thing with Age of Extinction correlates to this movie as far as Chicago, because Chicago Chicago was weird in, in Age of Extinction because you really didn't see much destruction. I don't know if they kind of zoned it out to say like, oh hey, uh, this section of Chicago was okay or cleaned up. Um, but I found that weird how they showed Chicago so, like, tidy in the Age of Extinction um, compared to more destruction because only five years have passed and, like, pretty much the whole city of Chicago was torn up. Now, it looks like in this movie they're going to be going back to showing, like, okay, Chicago is definitely really messed up. But I hope that they kind of show, like, oh, there's the clean part of Chicago out in the distance that's still okay because I think that was something that was really kind of like, huh in Age of Extinction. So I hope they kind of clear that up. And then that is your Decepticon lineup. Um, I hope their personalities are really awesome in the movie. I really hope they do. I hope they give them a lot of personality. And that maybe some of them end up surviving to see another movie. That would be cool as well. So let me know what you guys think of the Decepticons in the comment section below. Make sure to follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next time, I'm Mike. See you guys.